They have to be sprinkling crack on them. Tequila. Welcome to the industry special. Three, two, one. Welcome to industry special episode 33. Um, yeah, we're here at the Warfield. We got two new faces. Uh, you guys want to introduce <laughs> yourselves and who you are? I'm Tina Crotwell. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Oh. <laughs> I am Tina Crotwell, and I am an usher here at the Warfield Theater. I have been ushering here for 32 years. That's it. Man. Just Seems like yesterday, huh? No. <laughs> You're more than an usher, but I'm not sure what the right title would be. I was the usher supervisor for the Warfield and the Fillmore for almost 20 years. Yeah. Like 91, um, 91 to 2011, something like that. How hard of a job is that? Well, seeing as I had a full-time day job, too, it was, I was always busy. Uh, I was, worked uh, almost every show at both places that I could, and when I wasn't working, I was, this is a long time ago, I was listening to messages for people that <laughs> wanted to usher. <laughs> like, back before uh, everybody had an email address. Yeah. Oh, wow, you know, yeah. Um, late like 80s. Like on an answering machine. Yes. Yeah. People yeah. would leave. I would have to listen to hundreds of messages. <laughs> Jesus, that sucks. Of what people wanted to usher for. And I'm sure they left long messages. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want delete. Delete. I get the pertinent information and then delete. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm Beatrice and I do um, Tina's job. Oh, now you do Tina's job. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we both do it, but... I mean, you, you said that as if, like, like you know, took her, took her down. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, she... like, we both know what we're talking about, because yeah. we both have, we both been doing held it the same position, but Tina, much longer than I have, so she'll have a lot more insight into how things have changed over the years. Well, I've only been here for, I'll, it'll be three years in October. Oh, but shit. I like her style because she grabbed the shot. So oh yeah, let's oh, get out the way. I, I was like gonna be Fernet yeah. or Fernet or whatever. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh. I Are can't. We doing that? I can't do that because I didn't finish mine. Oh. What? <laughs> And she has a lineup of Don Julio, yeah. like she's about to just. Oh hey, I need a quarter. I would have won. That is kind of refreshing. Damn. It's very herbally. Yeah, see, some kind of minty yeah. herbally, right? Yeah, only three years. I feel like you've been here forever. Negative. Okay. Nope. Three years. Uh, that's it. Babe well, in the woods. Twenty sixteen. Well, it probably just feels that way because your anybody's job here is kind of. Um, you know, you have to rely on each other a lot, yeah, so you yeah, kind of exactly. get to know each other quickly. <laughs> and I got I thrown, say, right? I got yeah. thrown into being the lead of what I do pretty fast. So I've been okay. I've had those damn keys right there for probably two and a half years. So okay, <laughs> wow, yeah, that's crazy. That's yep. cool though. And, All right. And what? And you're like, um, you're a barback? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Technically, well, I a think bar Baxter. I, I, no. It's either goes from lead to head bar back. Yeah. Depending mm -hmm. on the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same yeah, thing. Lead to me. Usher, head yeah. Lead usher. Whatever. I'm yeah. still. I still do all of the bar backs. I just have to. Um, Make sure everybody else does their job too. Yeah, which is impossible. So yeah, <laughs> I just get yelled at for everybody else. <laughs> I know. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that person? That used to happen to me. <laughs> you are the charge. I was like, what? <laughs> what else do I have to add to my spiel, my usher meeting spiel? Right. People Spiels. used to have my spiel <laughs> memorized. Mm. There would be certain things that I would have to say at certain shows, like Jerry shows. I would always Oops. 
as we're in the Jerry <laughs> room, yeah. um, I would always mm -hmm. have to tell the Jerry ushers to keep their shoes on after they get cut and not to twirl in the aisles. Oh. <laughs> so That's I was like, yeah, because, oh, they were, they, they, it was like their miracle ticket getting to usher mm. shows. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, it seems like it has its perks. You get to watch everything. Uh, that's why I started ushering, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like to see shows. Yeah. I mean, it mm -hmm. was volunteering when I first started. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's better than having to pay for shows. Yeah, but really. I was like, I was into the punk rock scene and I was always just, you know, on the guest list for those shows. And then I'm like, that kind of died out. And I'm like, what are we going to do now for live music? <laughs> and then this came up. Hmm. So... My bad. I just got a text message when my phone is on airplane mode. That's <laughs> a bit suspicious. I hope we don't get a phone call and ruin the video. Whatever the case. Um, so, you've been here, you said, 32 years. 32. 1987. 87. When I first ushered here. I was two years old. Yeah. <laughs> you were. Yeah. 1987. It was, it was a comedy show. It was Roseanne Barr. Oh, oh wow. wow. That was, she was nasty. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, what is she talking about? <laughs> That's interesting. I wonder how much beers cost back then, because now our our beers are thirteen dollars a beer is ridiculous. Oh, can't remember, but and they, I pour down like we gallons always, of beer down the sink every we day. We would always get we Aww. used to get shift off. Well, we the ushers were volunteers and they would get drink tickets. Like a drink ticket, like mm -hmm. for doing an inside position, and then two drink tickets if they worked like at the doors or mm -hmm. an outside spot where they didn't see any of the show. Mm -hmm. And they got cut when the headliner got on, and I, they would all get their drink ticket for a free drink. And we, <laughs> some of us would work until the end of the night, and then we'd stay for shift off. And that's, <laughs> there's not shift off anymore. Yeah, things have become more. I think that's uh, when the, but that's when the bar was part of the house. Yeah. Now oh, they, okay. they, they, the bar is now done by different companies. Than yeah, they kind of like, the, what, like yeah. they contract yeah. us to come in. Yeah. yeah. But when it was owned by the house, it was just like, the only place I know that you still get shipped off is the Fillmore. You get mm -hmm. a beer at the end of the night, mm -hmm. a beer and a shot or something like that. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't see why that, why we couldn't do that. Couldn't though, do that. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, if I had to guess, it's because we've become more corporate yeah, well and i think it's just sucks. because it's it's like it used i think it just because it was part of the the bar was a part of the house yeah you know, that it's that would change it would be yeah. up to the um the company that is running the bars to mm -hmm. i guess they don't think they <laughs> they're not into shift off <laughs> yeah but we used to, yeah, we used to, I remember there was places where, well, you know, it can be because then people are here all night. You know? yeah, right, exactly. yeah. We used to stay for shift off and then we'd go to like bars until two o'clock in the morning and then I'd go home and get up at seven to go to work the next morning and work all day and work all night and do it again. Sounds like the life I live right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's with me in my thirties, yeah. yes. Yeah. It was, yeah, no rest. <laughs> no question. What's the, your favorite or most memorable show that you've seen? Oh, suicidal Tendencies played here in mm, like mid to late 90s. And they were the headliner. And they, all three levels mm. of the floor down there were pits. I mean, oh, you wow. know how there's usually yeah. just a pit and pit? <laughs> there was a pit on all three levels. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. What year was that? Do you remember? Oh, I don't know exactly what year. I mean, yeah. we could look it up with our little smart handheld devices, <laughs> but um, uh, it's it, it, mid to late 90s, something like that. Yeah. Like yeah. 96, 97 maybe. Hmm. Yeah. And it was just, it was really wild. Um hmm. Porno for Pyros was here. They were really good. They um, had a the the barricade actually broke. Jesus. Oh, shit. And it the the you know the security guards that are in yeah. front there there mm -hmm. was like got smashed and the crowd just like it was like metal fatigue or something and the crowd just got pushed up onto wow. the stage Holy with crap. the band with it was 
Perry Farrell was on stage. <laughs> Perry Farrell was on stage, and um, the yeah, there's one of the security guards when they finally was laid out on the stage. Paramedics had to come, and <laughs> it was about thirty minutes before the show resumed, but it finally resumed. Wow. And yeah. <laughs> Porno for part, you know, he had like people on, you know, have you ever seen Jane's Addiction? He's got the girls with the, the swings and the, you mm-hmm. know, all kinds of aerial stuff going on. And yeah, uh, there was all of that going on. <laughs> and then the barricade broke. Um, a lot of the big grunge bands came through here. Mm-hmm. Pearl Jam. Mm-hmm. Um, before they got huge. Like I remember seeing... When um, Nirvana was going to headline here, I remember seeing, mm. I was there was this t-shirt that was, oh, what did it say? It had something like, something God, God-fearing, baby-kissing, something motherfucker. <laughs> and it was just, you know, it was just like some kind of junk, just these four really like something motherfucker and um i'm like i saw it and i was like i kept you know i was like why is that name when they were going to headline here and this is right after teen spirit came out and they were like and i'm like why is that name familiar to me and then the day of the show i come and i see that t-shirt and i'm like they had been opening up for other bands you know and stuff yeah here and i'd seen that t-shirt a couple of times that's so cool yeah yeah so (laughs) Something about God fearing. Oh, I can't remember. It was really a cool t shirt. <laughs> if anybody knows what this t shirt is, huh? Text it to me or email it at industry special podcast at gmail or Twitter and uh, Instagram, Snapchat, all that industry special. I googled it. I, once. Know what I this... saw it's on there. I don't, even, I don't <laughs> yeah. want to Google it. Somebody send it to me. <laughs> right? You do the work. Yeah. <laughs> and so, what about you? Um, I'd have to say. There's two. I think one of them would be a rancid show. Um, yeah, it's good. Too. I mean, th- those shows are always really fun. It's I feel like you're on a ship with a bunch of drunken <laughs> sailors. Speaking of, I was just about to grab my cup too. Yeah. Whenever you mention um, drunken, we must sip. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay. Um, yeah, everyone. You know, they're singing along. And together and there was a lot of families here because they've been around for a while right yeah people know each other um there's a lot of community feel and you know there's a mosh pit and people are pretty drunk so put all those things together and it's just like Whoa. and there was one thing that um actually my mom was at that show one of those rancid shows and um one of the most memorable um things that happened was um there was like this really young kid who uh somehow well whatever they were in the mosh pit um and i guess like the kid was you know about to be in harm's way and you know she witnessed the crowd just coming together and pulling that kid up and getting him out and I've always, um, you know, kind like, of... But that kid, he's going to get moshed. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it just, like, it's so profound because people are scared of mosh pits or they make assumptions or whatever, but there's so much community and camaraderie and um, people working together, and there's a lot that goes on in there that people... There's, like, rules, you know, that people are following to make it work and to even make it safe, even though, mm-hmm. you know appears to be and is you know can be pretty aggressive yeah um, so it say, does it does it does but you, you're right you it is. It's very, like, mm-hmm. these guys know each other they're yeah. scared, you know and even though they're, they're just like it's kind of like it's there almost is like an a, etiquette in there yeah, well yeah. yeah and it's like a yeah. fight club <laughs> right yeah yeah it's fight club only it's a pit you know it was, yeah i mean it kind of reminds me of beat um, the shit out of each other <laughs> right no totally i had it's, a boyfriend it's a, a self-awareness that you know we need yeah. to get these aggressions out but we do it in this contained way i used to be a um, muay thai boxer so i relate to that oh, wow. a lot um so i like that you know you get to kind of whatever <laughs> but it's in a very controlled you know um there's rules to follow and there's um you know etiquette and there's a lot of respect involved yeah um, definitely so i just love that story because that right there just highlights um you know 
the proof that there is there is something going on there where people are all tuned into that. Um, I think that the those crowds too, like the heavy metal, the so those are some of the nicest people. Right. You know, they don't, they're like happy to Absolutely. be here. They know people. They they don't have a whole lot of like. I mean, their attitude is like. More like, yay, More we're here to that. have a good time. No, like, I, I, I want to I hear the poor in, in the oh, microphone. Oh, yeah. Oh, here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, there's some, they're like, hey, how you doing, you know? And they're just, they're, they go to concerts a lot, so they do, they more or less understand mm -hmm. the, you know, most most places you go have the, the house rules, you know? And yeah. they go to enough concerts that they know, you know, that there needs to be aisles and stuff like that. Right, right. But I think it also has a lot to do with the genre and, like, each genre. Um, you know, it's like its own subculture. Yeah. And every subculture has their own set of rules. And that's, like, the amazing thing about music. That's, like, what I love so much is that you create either this underworld or, you know, this place where you don't you're making up new rules that are not the norm of society and there are things there that happen that are acceptable because of this subculture that you have created um but uh you can't get away with those things you know in everyday regular society and those things are really important some of them are ass backwards don't get me wrong it's yeah. not all good yeah um like five finger death punch show <laughs> <laughs> what was the one? i just remember the the guy who punched his wife out i was like that kind of seemed to go with the the whole vibe <laughs> what i don't even understand it's went what? way over me i feel five foot four right now <laughs> he, that was the name of the that was the that just recently though wasn't it it was a while ago it was before i was doing yeah this role um yeah five Finger Death Punch is the name of the band. Um, they actually have pretty cool lyrics. I don't want to speak too much on them because I don't know enough about what they're all about. Um, but their lyrics are pretty anti... I think they're like anti... Establishment. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, but very male um, dominant crowd. Like you could probably pick five women Damn. in the crowd if I remember correctly. <laughs> Very, very, very high and testosterone. Reason, yeah. <laughs> and, and then the, the one of the few women that are in the show gets, like, punched by her husband, apparently. So. And she was cool with that, I'm guessing. She's like, yeah, fuck I don't, yeah, I'll I don't punch you later, know. motherfucker. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. what, so we, we can't have you drinking alone here. So oh, okay. How, how are we going to do this? That, yeah. Should right. I have a shot? Well, I mean, we don't have to what knock do you it down Should I slam it. Here. Do you need uh, since this one is open, and I'll do. Should okay. I make this pour? Oh, you see, into she, the. Um... She's a fast learner. <laughs> Come on, make noise. To do it fast. Yeah, fast as pour. Yeah. There we go. I got a little bit there. I learned that the hard way. Didn't make much noise. <laughs> <laughs> no gurgle gurgle. All right, well, hold on. I have a cup. Oh, so okay. Where's my cup? Do you need <sighs> one of these, Dex? I mean, I don't need one, but I mean, I don't want to leave do you guys want one? alone. That's right. There we go. Here, just. I'll just go with this one. All right, somebody say something. It's too much. Uh, uh, too much time. dead time. free air. <laughs> this is our. I was gonna. I was gonna. Yeah. When I, like I said, I was in the, mm -hmm. to the San Francisco punk, punk scene. For, mm -hmm. I came out here in 1979, mm -hmm. and uh, my boyfriend Dog, um, would, would um, he was always in the nice mosh pits at the shows. Okay. And he was always spraining ankles, and getting like. Spike holes in his head. <laughs> <laughs> like one time there was the one right in between, in right in no between way. his. Uh, he had like a third eye where somebody's spike had, <laughs> you know, spiked bracelet had, had hit him right in between the oh eyes. And uh, yeah, they were even even so they were you know it's back when people were still allowed to wear spikes to shows. Um, <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah, before they were known to. You can't do that anymore. No, we don't let them to bring, wear the spike bracelets anymore. Really? I think you can wear studs, but not oh, the spikes. Yeah. You know okay. the ones I'm talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. that yeah. look like little little spikes. Yeah, <laughs> you can't yeah. wear those. To, that's one of the things you can't wear. Yeah, in a 
like in in a big big venue like this that you know has insurance yeah. issues because I mean if somebody liability were to get hurt, you'd be liable real. liable yeah. if somebody got hurt like that. No babes in arms. Yeah. And I also no babies. hula hoops. No hula hoops at the rave shows. <laughs> I always see that. I'm like, what the? Who the hell's bringing a hula hoop in? <laughs> Thank you. So we like to cheers. cheers. Okay, cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers. cheers to hula hoops. Because somebody's appreciating them somewhere. <laughs> mm. Oh, he swallowed it wrong. I was just going to sip mine. Jeez, you guys are gangsters. Ay, ay, ay. What? You were going to sip tequila? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is this sipping tequila? Well, I mean, we have a whole nother maybe 20, 25, 30 minutes left. So. <laughs> I have this huge drink, I though. Be, well, I guess you got a point. <laughs> All right. So um, in my notes, I wanted to know you guys' favorite show and craziest moment. But I think you guys have kind of combined that a little bit. Unless you have something else on the tip of the brain. I mean, there's so many. There are. And sometimes it's really yeah. hard to remember the special moments. Yeah. But so me being here three years, one, what was it I that have a little was... bit of a... And how long you... have you been? <clears throat> well, well, I don't know. How you long don't have I been know. Here? She not... Do you know? I don't know. About eight years? What? Seven years? Seriously? I really don't know. I'm really bad with <clears throat> timelines. When were you? Yeah. No, <laughs> were you here What was on? it? Um, I was thinking of something that was a really good show. And there wasn't like an insane moment to go with it. But I forgot what mm. it was now. After I had that tequila shot. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. So you guys got the Añejo. It's a little smoother. Yeah. Oh, that blonde oh, boy. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, you got something? That's what I... No, but I, <laughs> I was just... We were talking earlier, and I was like, we... When I was... I went to San Antonio last October, and my, me and my cousin went to a, a, um, a bar that had tequila flights. Oh, and yeah. And she's like, how can you do a flight of tequila? I'm like, well, it's not a full shot. Exactly. <laughs> And oh, it's shit. more, you know, higher end and like even like, um, you know, small batch and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, special tequila. I just thought of one. Oh, here yeah. we go. Let's it do happened it. not that long. I'm not going to say the artist's name because. Oh, what? Well, why not? Larry why? put everybody on blast. Who was it? Tell us. No. <sighs> <laughs> I, if I tell you the story, you'll probably remember because it wasn't that long ago. All right. Okay. Tell but us. there was, I'm pretty sure she would be. Considered a senior citizen, she had a walker. Oh, yeah, yes. you know. <laughs> oh my god! What? She, got, she was in the pit. <laughs> there, she was in the pit. There was in a walker, walker? and yeah, um, said artist or someone from stage actually. The never, dude. I never had it confirmed. So yes, no, I saw him. He okay. jumped into the crowd. He was like, yeah. being passed around like a joint. Okay, and um, he. Yeah, and I don't know if he landed on her or just the whole Pretty much. crowd thing. She got her walker got munched. <laughs> said, what? Yeah. Okay, just I don't, I don't know. You have to ago. tell me. Come on. Huh? Tell me. Well, Who there was might it? there could be. What was his I mean, name? if the, if it was the actual artist that hit the person, that could probably be an issue. It was the white issue, boy so rap show. I'm not saying. Oh, anything. MGK. <laughs> <laughs> Machine Gun Kelly. I'm personally not liable because I didn't say the name. So. <laughs> that white boy rap. I can't remember his name. White boy rap who also started doing like country rock at some point. Well, and he show. also did, yeah, he was doing some rock riffs. I'm like, yeah, and he was doing his head, but he had no hair. I mean, you know? that, that's the thing, really. Like, you're asking us for examples, which, you know, they are very entertaining. Um, but all around, it's just like, that just brings you to the point that when you know these kinds of what point well make yeah. point. What's like, the point you know, <laughs> you're dealing with like crazy behavior yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely you know it's a lot of crazy behavior that's here. like well, what... people are out to have a good time you know and a lot of times it goes beyond i don't know what the hell it is there's yeah, a lot of things that's not what's good time to you <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's not a good time to me. Well, hopefully well, this is like... a good time for us and everyone listening right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just brings up these weird, you know, scenarios that you have to get used to reacting to. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, like, how to evaluate them and make decisions. Um, and it takes a lot of practice, you it know. Because yeah. it's like, you're not used to, why the hell would somebody do that? 
you know, or like somebody Why would who wants be? to jump from the balcony and you stop them and then they want to talk to the manager and you're like, wait a second. <laughs> you want to get me in trouble for your bad behavior because you wanted to hurt yourself <laughs> yeah, like, and other people. Let's, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's definitely like, call people him People don't up understand <laughs> what you're doing sometimes. They just don't understand why you are trying to be a cloud on their, you know, parade or whatever. They're true. just like, you know. True. They, they were just, oh, I'm having a blast. Why can't I jump and break my head open? You know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it has happened. It has happened. People yeah. have fallen been over the banister and cracked their head open on, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it happened a lot. It's like, I'm going to slide down this banister. Ooh, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a story of somebody at the Regency Ballroom who jumped from the balcony. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, why? Why? You can't fly. I took that, yeah. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have took all that ass here. <laughs> it's like, you know when that's happened to you more than once in your life, something is awry because it should only happen to you like when you're in your youth or you're at that venue or that party where someone's on acid and they jump through the roof. Mm -hmm. You know, that happened to me twice. Yeah. And the second time it happened, I was like, this isn't right because I'm past a certain age now. <laughs> Why am I seeing this again? Seven more times yeah. Yeah. Most people only have one story like that. That used, to, that used to happen when so the Jerry Garcia band was like almost a house band here before Jerry died. Mm. Whenever the Grateful Dead were not on tour, they the Jerry Garcia band would play here like three mm. nights in a row: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And um. <laughs> Speaking of, remind me, I mm -hmm. have a story to tell about one of those. But by the third night, by Sunday night, people had been up and on drugs and alcohol for so long that no we were just way. dealing with people <laughs> flipping out oh, all night, oh. by Sunday night. And yeah. then, so the thing that I was going to, there was a three-night run. And on the first night, was it a guy that got beat up down in L.A.? And mm. then the cops didn't get... Rodney King. Rodney King. So after that, you know, the, and there were the big riots down... Well, there was also some riots that went on here in San Yeah, Francisco. there was riots mm. everywhere. And this area. Mm -hmm. And it was the night, the first night of a three-night Jerry Garcia run. Oh, and all goodness. the hippies oh, were wow. out on the street when people just started bashing windows. Oh, and, wow. We had to bring everybody inside. I was like, what, 90, uh, 91 ish, something like that? Something like that, yeah. It was, I was it's pretty a few young. Years before OJ I worked up the street. The yeah. I worked run. at Glide Memorial Church, and it was, yeah, it was, I worked up the street, and I would come down here and work up there all day and come down here and work at night. <laughs> and, um, oh, so yeah, that was, so we had like this huge crowd outside on the street mm. and then we had to bring them all in because it was it was super crazy people were bashing in mm. like on powell street oh. where all the you know all those stores are people there was all these shoe stores and i remember i was just walking down the street and all of a sudden out right at taylor and powell i just see this group of people rock out and they're running with Boxes, arm loads oh. of boxes of shoes. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh my God. You said, hey. hey. Yeah. My size. Yeah, it, was, it was like, you know, Adidas stores or, you know, some kind of sports shoe. Yeah. And they were, there was the, across the street, the jewelry stores. There was a jewelry store across the street and a jewelry store up the street from here. And people were busting in those display windows and snatching the jewelry out of them. It was crazy. <laughs> And we, yeah, we had to open really early that night <laughs> <laughs> and let everybody in so that they didn't get, because, yeah. you know, it yeah. was a bunch of, yeah, yeah. looting and rioting, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty wild on the streets, yeah. The good days. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you said to mention a Jerry Garcia, and you didn't even... I'm sorry? You, you said mention some Jerry Garcia, but you didn't say, because you were starting the story, it was like, remind me. That was it. That was the story oh, I wanted it. to tell you. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the the original thought was that by the third night of a Jerry Garcia band run, mm -hmm. the people would be, we were talking about people being really high and just and the kind gone, of things huh? you had to deal with. Mm -hmm. By Sunday night, it would be so crazy. You would be like... And then that reminded me of the craziness that happened. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> when, yeah. when, at the beginning of this other... Because they would play like... Whenever the dead weren't on tour, they would play once a month for three nights for three nights mm-hmm. in a row. Didn't they do 15 shows in a row back in the day? I don't remember if they did that. <laughs> I know the longest run of shows that I, I remember, remember was that. was a Penn and Teller, the magic show. How oh. many? They did like 35 shows and matinees. <laughs> On matinees on Saturday and Sunday. I wow. made it. It was, right in, it was like in November called or something. It was right before Christmas. I had, and hell? we used to get paid cash <laughs> under the table, the ushers. And this, because this is, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we would get paid cash under the table. And I would, I would be, I, this is before I was the supervisor usher, but I would be like the downstairs supervisor. Mm-hmm. And I would get $35 a night or $35 a show. And I had a coffee can full of cash because I was working every night and mm. all day. And I just like had, you know, no time to spend it. So mm. I had all this money for Christmas. It was great. <laughs> the question is, what kind of coffee can? <laughs> I, I don't remember. It was probably Folgers or something. Well, I think it was red, question. so it was probably Folgers. The best part of waking up. Oh my yes. Folgers you remember. Oh, cup. my God. You remember that? Oh, yeah. That's no, funny. no, I yeah. remember well, commercials, yeah. cigarette commercials, where Before people were smoking and I, I remember oh, elevators. Yeah. I remember a Winston Man or two in a magazine, but I never saw an actual TV commercial for a cigarette. I do. I don't Benson remember and Hedges one hundreds. I didn't have a TV. Benson and Hedges one hundred. They didn't had... have a TV. No, I didn't have a TV, and I didn't see the commercials because mm-hmm. like, I didn't have a TV. <laughs> Like, you're not even saying a specific time, but just like, I didn't have a TV. I grew up without a TV. <laughs> the end. No, I grew up, so why did you grow up without a TV? <laughs> or when did you first watch TV? I mean, I saw some stuff at, you know, my neighbor's house. But people would sing commercials. Okay, so here's a funny story. One time I was in a mall... With my mom. (laughs) One time. And we saw, (laughs) we're in a department store and there was a, there was a monitor, you know, hanging from the ceiling and they were playing Weird Al Yankovic's, um, Just Eat It. Eat it. I was talking to Tom and Waste about that. I was going to say, was he doing Just Eat It? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And I stopped and I was like in grade, um, five or something like that. So I was like 11 or 12 maybe and I my mouth dropped open I was like mom that that guy stole the song <laughs> that's the same song the kids are singing in my recess yard or whatever <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't even know about Weird Al Weird Al and he stole everybody's songs yeah or did parodies of yeah yeah everybody's songs yeah, yeah. yeah he's gonna be so no Greek. MTV for you growing up I did not have MTV oh man you never saw a Tupac music video I mean, what? there was like one summer th- that I did have a TV and I got it just because I wanted MTV. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? MTV <laughs> used to be good. Yeah. So yeah. It used to be music summer. videos. Yeah. <laughs> and not shows. Yeah, really. It used to be music videos all day. It was music all day. television. Right. Yeah. 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 And well, it was, and and it was no videos all day long. Yeah. yeah. And we, I grew up in Canada, so we had much mm. music, which was the equivalent of MTV, but, um, well, Canada, that's about it. Yeah. That's interesting. (laughs) All right. So since you grew up in Canada, you may not even understand this, but I'm going to bring up a little something that I remembered the other day and I was like, Oh Oh. shit. Do you remember when, and see, I thought it was 30 CDs for a penny, the Columbia house. Oh hell yeah. I remember that. BMG. No, you didn't make that up. I had it, that as well. Well, I went and looked up. It was 12 CDs for a penny. But, okay. Or okay. a dollar. Whatever. Yeah. It wasn't as exaggerated as I thought no, it was. No, I had that. Yeah. Oh, but, oh, um, oh. Were you? Oh, you yeah. You would, I was mail. on that. You'd find yeah. a little card in I the was magazine. on that. Yeah. I used to get CDs yeah. for that. Yeah. And then I even stopped it and they kept sending me CDs and then they wanted money. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. no, I quit it. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'm keeping these. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Man. So I looked it up and where's it at? I probably still have CDs from that. So I have I, all my CDs. I found an article yeah, from 2015, I think, when they finally went out of service and they finally 
No, I got literally mine in the stopped. 90s. Wait, oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, early yeah. 90s. Yeah, but okay. 2015, when they finally were 2015? like. 2015? Yeah. Really? They lasted that long? Really? So the title article is The First 12 Cost a Penny, but. Yeah. In uh-huh. the 1980s and 90s, Columbia House could do no wrong as a, he- as a way to get music. The mail order service was cheap and easy at first, but then the bills came. Today in Tedium, yesterday, a co-worker and good friend of mine revealed to me a fact that made me feel very old. We were talking about Spotify and his desire to not pay $10 per month for mm-hmm. the service. And I referenced Columbia House. He did not know what I was talking about. I was <laughs> taken aback by this news. I thought everyone knew what Columbia House was. The mail order CD service um, had a bright moment in the early 90s only to see its business model fall apart thanks to iTunes and later Spotify. Today in Tedium, we're going to explain what it was and the its effect on the music industry and the shady business practice that made a penny stretch into a dozen CDs. So there's a little graphic with like their little advertisement. They have uh-huh. Michael Jackson and, and. But was it a shady business model? Because oh, it was horribly shady. Yeah. They must have. Known. Where did they get off? But it was I mean, like it was every... it was actual. It wasn't like you know somebody, you know, went to the movies and ran this on a VHS or whatever. You know. So essentially, when you I... signed up for it, because mm-hmm. I read it earlier. Essentially, when you signed up for this. You'd get those twelve CDs for almost what was it? I a, say penny a penny or whatever. Dollar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, was it, it was penny? incredibly, a, literally a, a penny. Yeah. So like I remember <laughs> magazines and the little thing would fall out. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And I'd be like, what? Now Tom, like twelve, and she was like, whatever, fine, right? And we were like, we do like six of them damn things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what happened after that because yeah. I was a kid, but I mean, exactly. the CDs came though. Same here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, the CDs some of the CDs came that and, I had in the nineties came the, from this. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. Here. And um, the thing I didn't like the options they gave you when they, you know, at first there was this like huge amount of music that you had access to and you could get like twelve mm. CDs for a dollar or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then when you got those first 12 CDs and you would have yeah. a list of CDs You'd that get you a could bunch get. Of shitty yeah. stuff. And it wasn't That, l- that little checkbox. You'd be like, oh, I want right. that Michael Jackson. Okay, yeah. give me that Prince. All right, no, and me... I didn't like none yeah. of that. You yeah. Know, I was more the rock and roll type. Yeah. But um, yeah, there, there weren't enough options for me. And yeah. I did, I like I said, cut it off. Yeah. And then they kept sending me CDs and I was yeah. like, and then they wanted me to pay more for it. <laughs> And so supposedly, like, yeah, I, yeah. the way their model was set up was oh, okay. that they had a deal with a certain amount of artists. Now, those artists never got any royalties mm. from you getting that CD. Oh, really? Mm. And Just they, like Spotify so that's the shady part, then. Apple yeah. Music? Well, yeah. no, okay. I, no they, they get a small percentage. They yeah. don't get like a full album pay. Mm-hmm. But they would also print the CDs on low quality stuff. So if you got the cassette, oh. it'd be the worst cassette possible. Okay. Oh, okay. And if you got a CD, it would be the worst CD possible. Okay. Okay. Now they've la- they've test they lasted the test of time though. Yeah. They're yeah. still here. I still yeah. have them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. That's the shady aspect of it. Yeah. Well, that the, makes no, sense. well that's or part one part shady. Of it, the second yeah. part was once you signed up it's like a subscription service. So if you signed up for like you wanted to get New York Times on your iPad. Mm-hmm. And you just, I just want to read a couple articles because they gave me a week free, right? If yeah. you forget to yeah. cancel the subscription, yeah. you're on the hook. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, yeah, same I've thing always... back then was like you had to call or send an, a mail thing in to be like, right. yo, I don't want anything else. Yeah. Because yeah. they would just start sending you random stuff and they would make so they they were, they were that, yeah, I got they some would of those CDs. five like, times the amount for some from? random ass yeah. CD that you yeah. never asked for. Yeah. Yeah. So they were probably banking on that. Yeah happening what I mean, you got what you got what people because people well, will yeah. pay it's just like those payday loans yeah mm-hmm. you know we'll you know give you five hundred dollars and you know it's 25 bucks a month but that mm-hmm. 25 and but you're supposed to pay it back immediately and that 25 bucks a month is only mm-hmm. the late fee that mm-hmm. you're paying off every month you still owe five hundred dollars yeah mm-hmm. you know and it's like same thing, kind of with that. Yeah. Not as bad because those people have ruined everybody. <laughs> they, they were banking on you, forgetting to uh-huh. tell them, nah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. The thing that weirds me out about that is that it brings me back to the time where I came to that, like, you know, conclusion that this is like, oh, I'm gonna work this. 
But I was so young, and I'm already like, okay, I'm going to make sure I cancel this before my parents find out or whatever, <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> before I get the first bill, like when now it's like, you know, channels on Netflix or Amazon Prime or something. I'm going to yeah. get this, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I took that week for free. I'm already figuring yeah, out how to scam month. things at such a young age, and you too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I just was like, I want them CDs. Yeah, I was yeah. like six. My mom was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> 12 CDs for a dollar. No problem. Yeah. And we do it like four or five times. I don't know what happened after that. Right. I don't know. I don't really know. Right. 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 Stop sending CDs. <laughs> I know we got some CDs, though. Yeah. Well, there was a thing that you could fill out. Yeah. And right. say, yeah. stop sending me. And I sent that in a couple uh, of times. And they kept sending the me like, those oh, random we never got CDs. It. And I was like... That's you, up, I've yeah. asked you to stop sending them to me, and you keep. I don't even like this music. Yeah, and I ain't send, even going to Because the second go around when they just sent you whatever they want, it would just be. Yeah. Extra, it would probably be somebody you never heard of. Before. <laughs> or heard of and didn't want none. Yeah, of, I mean know? they yeah. definitely didn't have like obscure weird. Shit. No, no, they didn't. It was all that I top hits. Yeah, right. But it was like right. nothing that you the most per, like. Okay, yeah. I've heard this yeah. a thousand times. Send it back. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most ridiculous radio hit. It's a good, good topic. Yes, it sparked the mind. Definitely remember. So yeah. I, I mentioned earlier that I had a, a, a something Trumpish, but I, we were not going to get into any politics. Mm, okay. So, rapper ASAP Rocky's charged with assault in Sweden. Mm. I saw that. I saw the headline. In a street fight. You, haven't, you haven't watched the news. Or... I haven't, but I did say I've read a few headlines. There but that's go. it, yeah. yeah. And so, it was a street fight or something. Yeah. So, well, supposedly people were following him on the streets, bothering him, and he finally just was like, fuck it, and just kind of... Okay. Get away from me before I somebody. punch you out. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, actually, he actually, he actually did punch somebody out. Okay. Yeah, so, ASAP Rocky has been charged with assault, him. causing actual bodily harm in Sweden and remain in custody until mm -hmm. trial takes place. Mm. Um, so okay. that's whatever, right? But the Trump thing. So Trump, I guess uh, Kim it's Kardashian came to Trump shit. and she's been trying to like, for her best interest, come to him. Mm. And he's listening to everything she says for some reason. <laughs> so she's like, hey, <laughs> he's in he's Sweden cute. in jail. <laughs> yeah. Trump, because get him he's out. Trump and she's a woman. Yeah. A pretty woman. She has Christ. a vagina. So what did she tell him? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, specifically, I think she was like brought to attention like, hey, he's in Sweden and they won't let him out and uh, blah, blah, blah. Sweden won't let him out. Yeah. Or okay. they're, they're, they're charging him, blah, blah, blah. Whatever yeah. it is. Okay. So he's now on a on the thing about Sweden. Now he's like, Sweden, how dare you? All the things I've done for you and this and that. <laughs> oh, and they're treating him horrible. This is a, the African Americans the United States are not going to handle this. And it's like, you didn't care before this. You're only doing this because this Kardashian brought it up. Yeah, yeah. How do you get famous by just being? I don't understand why they're famous. So you want our it. opinion about this? Oh, I mean, if you want to, yeah, I need an opinion, but. I definitely think give I want, my opinion. Yeah, well, first off, I want to know more about why he was arrested. Okay. What exactly happened? I'm going to read the and BBC article. I don't article. care what Trump <laughs> has to say about it. Because he thing? hasn't done shit. To I don't need to read the whole it. thing, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to sprinkle some in there. Assault causing actual bodily harm carries a maximum prison sentence of two years in Sweden. ASAP Rocky has been held in custody since July 3rd following an alleged assault, wow. which took place on June 30th. From the perspective of the individuals, this is a quote. In this case, it is, of course, an extremely long time. Three weeks in jail. Yeah. Uh, the prosecutor says his focus has been investigating the case as quickly as possible and that three weeks of investigation time for an assault with three sus suspects isn't mm. a long time. Now, also... Well, considering their prisons aren't anything like ours, but okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he, <laughs> he can't go home. No, he cannot. Yeah, that's still a long time. So, some have accused Swedish prosecutors of racism in, rela in, in relation to the case, including ASAP Rocky's mom. Hmm. Or they said mom because it's the BBC. But that's something officials have denied, saying that they have no hidden agenda. White rapper g Easy, who used to come to Warfield every other damn show yeah claimed recently that asap rocky's three weeks stay in swedish prison was an example of systemic racism g easy was arrested in sweden last year for assault yeah, possession yeah, of yeah. drugs and use of narcotics and how long after was he... pleading guilty he was sentenced to probation given a ten thousand dollar fine and released after a day and a half oh mm. my god wow i just watched and that so now big bad trump's gonna 
He's going to make it right. <laughs> he just do, you know, it would be nice if he would do more than talk about stuff. Yeah. You know? And also, the, why the does he want... tweet about it or well, whatever. He just wants the most high-profile stuff on Yeah, his... I mean, he's the president of the United States. He should be able to call somebody in Sweden and go, um, can you let that guy go? Or something, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. No, that's pretty ridiculous. I watched this movie last night, The um, Hate You Give. I've heard of this. It was really a good movie. Oh, yes. It's yeah. a very good movie. Where'd you watch it on? I watched it on HBO. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how I can watch I it because I, I have HBO. Yeah, it's on I have HBO, HBO yeah. It was, it's, they, it's on HBO right now. It's one of the movies. Mm -hmm. It was very good. Very good. So when we're, you're asking it's about the It's stuff that Trump a lot of us, I like, I already know. Yeah. But that some people really don't. Is it don't. a documentary? No, it's an actual movie based on, you know, police brutality oh, and, the, okay. and, and, you know, a, a young boy gets killed. It's a story about a girl who witnesses, mm -hmm. is with a guy who gets yeah. killed, but shot and killed by the police. Yeah. Because he has a hairbrush in his hand. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, and it's something that a lot of us know, but that not some people really don't. A lot of people understand. don't know. Right. They I've... don't understand. They're not. Yeah. They live in a different world. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's San Francisco is so multicultural. And, I mean, stuff like that still happens here. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you well, know, also, people are more aware of it. The city's changed a lot. Yeah, too. it has. Since I, <laughs> yes, I, since I moved here. Yeah. Immensely. I mean, the last five years has changed a lot, and the last yeah. ten years has changed a lot, and the last fifteen yeah. years has changed a lot. But yeah, it's, it's it's completely yeah. It's how much it's changed since I moved here in 1979 is completely yeah, like, totally amazing. Could go on about that forever. Yeah. Was, <laughs> Seriously. Well, we were talking about um, Trump for one, right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I just I just wanted to make that I'm having a Trump thing. I was just yeah. you know yeah. you know whatever yeah. thoughts you. Have. I think I mean, he should be able to do more than just talk about it. Yeah, I mean, my comment about Trump is that he relies on us having conversations just like this. You know, it's a distraction. He, um, I mean, I've read things and heard people talk about just this issue, and I don't think enough people really believe it or are, you know, realizing it. But he is the kind of, it's like the kid in your... Smoking mirrors. He's like, yeah, he's like the kid in your, you know grade two class or however you say it in the United States, um, second grade or whatever, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, grade same two, thing, same thing. Grade, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, we all know about that kid who is doing, being an asshole just to get attention. Yeah. And that is part of what he thrives on. And yeah. that is, please listen to this part. Cause I think it is seriously important that that is how he is successful. So he's, yeah, he's I don't very even want much to, really. Yes, yes. You know, he's try and successful break it down. because he says he's successful. Oh yeah, I wasn't trying to break it down at all. Yeah. yeah. Like said, <laughs> this was the first of like Just the what the off. fuck stories that I have. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but two. yeah, that's that's really <laughs> seriously comparing to what G E Z did and what ASAP Rocky's doing now. That's yeah. crazy. You have to understand, you're in. Mm -hmm. Those countries over there, though, you know. Yeah, seriously. And there's a lot of pop, um, what is it, populist? Um, we don't want to call it Nazism, but, you well, know, the, the too right. Late. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's a, there's a, they're, they're moving to the right, a lot of them, because of immigration stuff, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so this a lot more well, or at least right it's, it's wing, coming out or what we would call right wing mm -hmm. people, are in control over there now. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What were we talking about at Popson's earlier? The focus groups. Yeah, I was in a focus group. And yeah. like, we were just saying how, you know, the three of us were just saying how, like, sort of San Francisco has changed and we're sort of in the bubble and people are more aware. But I was in this focus group and it was about SFPD. And the people who were in that group with me um, were longtime San Franciscan re residents and they were not aware. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, they were not. And um, I, what people were like, oh, are you an activist? 
like, no, I'm not a fucking activist. Well, but, you know, I just have a brain. Francisco I is also on. very neighborhoody, and people who have lived here for mm-hmm. a long time just live think. in a certain neighborhood, and they do. I mean, I like think I that's said, true. The, the, yeah. the, 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 that San Francisco, there's yeah. everything you need in your neighborhood. Right. There's right. restaurants, there's grocery stores. Yeah, that there's, is a fact. And if you don't right. have to go out to Hunts Point, but you, Hunters everybody Point, sorry, has Hunters seen Point on or, firsthand. I mean, with the you know the one benefit one benefit of social media is that people were seeing live the shit that rappers have been telling us for years i'm like i'm pretty sure these people have all seen this whether or not they stick in their one neighborhood or not like yeah what the fuck well, and it shouldn't and also the way they're people live in bubbles you know they right do. but also they just the way that what they see you know people are physically. approaching it it's like one for one. Oh, my personal interaction with the sfpd has been great and wonderful well, mostly mine has been as well, too, but that is not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the stuff on the grand scale. If you're murdering someone in fucking Timbuktu and they're SFPD or just, P, uh, you know, police from the U.S., that's affecting me. I don't care if my personal experiences have been good. That's a fucking problem because you're hurting somebody else. There's a systemic problem, like you were saying. I had a close personal friend that was murdered and stuffed into a barrel and left in Golden Gate Park Ooh. by a dirty cop. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. And this was in the 80s. Wow. But, yeah, she and another woman and another man were all shot execution style. Holy and God. then stuffed into, like, oil barrels and left in Golden Gate Park. Oh, my God. Damn. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, even if, you know, you're blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, <laughs> all your interactions with cops mm-hmm. aren't always good. Right. Wow. Yeah. You know. Well. Okay. <laughs> okay. This Sorry. Next... Tell me didn't no, mean no, to no, go no. that way, but yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm down for it all. But this next story is going to be a lot more lighthearted. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> Kind of, though. It depends on, you know, depends on the person. Just one question. What's the word we say again to drink more? Don't just drink. Oh, okay. You don't have to say anything. But I'm saying, no, when somebody said drunk and I was like, oh, let's just drink. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, there we go. Cheers. I have to have a sip of yours because I think I finished mine. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I'll be, That's so refreshing. It is. Yes. It's like a summer. All right. Okay. So, sorry for that. Watermelons <laughs> to replace piglets in California fair event. Here's the story. <laughs> this is the AP. Like greased watermelons? Santa Rosa, Sa- Santa Rosa, California. Watermelons are set to replace piglets in an annual event celebrating agriculture in a California fair. The Press Democrat reported Saturday at the Sonoma County Fair has eliminated the pig scramble from Farmer's Day due to rising public concern and protests over animal welfare. In the long-running event at the the, the fair at Santa Rosa, youngsters chased and tried to capture piglets weighing 40 to 60 pounds. That's like a case and a half of beer. Officials say this year's event, August 4th, will instead include elementary school children carrying watermelons <laughs> slicked with vegetable oil around an obstacle course and a timed race. The board president says the decision reflects Why a does heightened... Why everything have to be so politically correct? The board president says this decision it. reflects a heightened awareness towards calls for humane treatment of farm animals Yay. at the fair 55 miles north of San Francisco. That's cool. I think it sounds great. Do you really? I think so. I'm down for catching a little pig. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they don't get hurt. It's yeah. little kids chasing yeah. after oh, them. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. think about that. It's little kids chasing after them. They grease them. They, I but mean, also I've never seen, 40 a, I've to... seen kids get hurt more than pigs. Seriously, a 40, 60 pound pig? That's, yeah. That's big. Yeah, I don't and know. pigs are mean. That's like a baby okay. keg right there. Pigs can be mean, yes. I remember being too. run out of a pig pen. Oh man, when I was I oh, grew shoot. up in Texas, right? Oh, there, <laughs> there we go. Some pigs that are big and they're mean and Assholes. they come towards you looking at you and you're like, "Bye. <laughs> I'm out of here." I once went to okay. see this prize-winning hog and I swear to god, it was making the noises that there it was this Australian horror movie about uh, 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 a wild boar 
mm-hmm. a, a killer wild boar. It was some kind of horror. Like the Cujo But it pigs. was making that noise. It's just, just the, it was huge. Aww. It was not a cute little pig. Aww. It was a huge hog. And Aww. it looked, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere near that hog. I would be like, nope. I don't know what I think because I just don't know what animals truly experience. And I don't think any of us really do. So Yeah, you have a point there. Unless we could talk to the pigs and understand what they're saying. Okay, don't do little. <laughs> <laughs> okay so No, I do you yeah, mean? I you it could be you're right. It could be a traumatic experience. Yeah, it might be. Because could they're be. running yes. and screaming from the yeah. little running also, and screaming children. Do you eat meat? No, I don't. <laughs> Okay, she is so not. She go. is a vegetarian. Oh my god! You have to put me in a box just because I said I this one thing. Not in a box. <laughs> it's the same for I could be a non-vegetarian. If anything, we're in a box. <laughs> she is a non-meat eater. That's fine. I'm not a non-meat eater because I care about animals. <laughs> really? I I just grew up a vegetarian. I oh, didn't okay. really have a say in it. <laughs> so you n- you never tasted bacon? No, actually, when I was a teenager. For a moment, there I don't know, brief time. You tried it. Somebody, I get it was probably she had my a slice mom. Of bacon. She was like, she was like oh I don't my care what you God. do. God, the heavens opened. The last piece <laughs> of meat I had was a McDonald's cheeseburger, oh, and I think I almost God. vomited. Yeah, because yeah, it was like not. Worst. It was like so. It became some it's kind of weird even, thing that it's I not needed. Even meat. After raving all night, oh yeah, I would have a freaking <laughs> cheeseburger. Oh Lord! I don't know why, but I like. Yeah, I'm probably because it was cheap partial to, to um, McDonald's crack fries. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Those fries are heroin to the vein. Boyfriend at one time, he was like Taco Bell. He's like, "Why would you want this? Why would you want these tacos from Taco Bell? They have to be sprinkling crack on them. Uh, <laughs> why would you yeah. crave these tacos? Yeah, they have to. Just you know what it is, you guys? It's salt." Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's a little the crack, more than the crack salt, seasoning yeah. of the world. It's a little salt. more than salt, seriously. Okay. Yeah, because those fries. Yeah, I put as fries. Long as they're hot. I put salt on my fries. <laughs> yeah, and my fries have never tasted like the McDonald's fries. I yeah, I since like you get a hot them. one, you get a hot yeah. fry. We have some hot fries. Just maybe I the should next try door. them. And I don't even yeah. like them. I don't no. think I like. Them. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it just like, it just makes your whole body taste like, like you just injected. Like you are like tried. that bad oil. That bad oil. I just was <laughs> my last the the la- my last interaction with the the McDonald's on Haight Street before oh. it just mysteriously all of a sudden wasn't open anymore. <laughs> it's not there anymore. I thought, no. Yeah. I walk because I live like two blocks away, and what? I walk by. Oh, shit, I go that's in. Right. That's I weird. go in. I buy that's an weird. order of McDonald's fries. I go home. The next day, I'm walking to go to the bus stop, and it's gone. I'm like, maybe they what? couldn't they handle the clientele. Finally, maybe no, they just really it's couldn't. It's gonna be some it. kind of condo, ho- condo hotel. Of course, just like our. Wow, even McDonald's gets kicked out. Not even here. Yeah, that way. yeah. Mm-hmm. They need to please just put like a the the. I'm saying the damn uh, mm-hmm. parking lot we had that mm-hmm. is R.I.P. All right. So I'm going to dig Good a little questions. deeper into the what? Good questions. These aren't these are articles. I'm just throwing Topics. an article at you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, we go off subjects a lot, but okay. <laughs> th- this you probably have also heard about. <laughs> Thank you, Internet. What? Berkeley votes to rename oh, yes. manholes gender neutral <laughs> maintenance holes. I love Once again, it. Why I love it. has everything gotta be so politically correct these days? I think I, I like it. It's Berkeley. I think I like it. I, Someone's gotta do it. It's <laughs> not gonna hole? be a manhole anymore. Maintenance that's hole. That's awesome. Maintenance hole. We should call it a different some other So kind when I first hole. saw this, I was like I tried to figure out what the history of manhole was oh, and if yeah. man because was short or something. Used to go down in there. No, it's that's that's all it was. I was yeah. I hoped for better. I thought it was like, no. maybe man is shortened for maintenance. <laughs> no, no, no. It's because that's where men go down I researched this their... for two hours and there's couldn't women. find anything. Yeah, there's probably more women doing it now, but I mean, you know, yeah. a maintenance hall. Could it be a person hall? <laughs> I mean, okay, let's see, let's see. <laughs> you know, like, what, what do we... Oh, that's it. That's <laughs> it. That's all I have to say about this. I'm just going to yeah, read I mean... the... the... I'm just going to read it. I love it. I love oh it. Oh, my God. I think yeah. I'm I saw I'm that, too. It. I did see I that I think just article. people are just, just 
just so digging like, a little too deep. Now I know this I is like so too, this yeah. is from like probably eighteen the eighteen hundreds. Obviously, that's when they started building these sewers and everything. Yeah, but I, like it's it's just, that's what I said. Why do we have to hole. be so politically correct these well, days? Well, that's a very good. I mean, question. it can't be a, a manhole. It can't be a woman hole. It has to be. You could never because be now a woman there's hole. like a a, a a G and a C and a. You know, yeah. it's so we it's can't call it any kind of a per. We could just call it a person hole, and that just doesn't. Seem I mean, right. it seems it is now silly. a maintenance hole. That's one, two, three, four, but five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You gotta letter put word. weird things in maintenance place. Holes. To I don't think they say manhole on the thing, though. Do they? It, it doesn't say anything. It says P G and E yeah, or it says sewer. The company, yeah. It uh, doesn't say manhole. Man, there is no, there's no yeah, technical. What, what that, that, exactly are that's they renaming? Slang. Yeah, yeah. I mean, calls it, it has PG and E, or it has AT and T, or I think they call or, it like you know, service, the sewer system, uh, the water system, like a service. I mean, thing. okay. Yeah. I personally like it because it speaks to the, the like the the, the tiredness I feel of everything being. Man related. Is she leaving? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, God. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I'm sorry. I really have to pee. Oh, go. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. If, if you can... have to, you, you, you can. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Please. <laughs> I've been holding it for a while. I mean, we're not going to edit it. We're, we're just going to keep talking without you. So hurry back if you can. <laughs> Come back soon. Don't use your manhole to pee. I know. It's you don't left, have a manhole. Left, left, left. Okay. <laughs> Somebody turn the damn lights off. That's why I was like, who turned the damn lights off? No, the, I've been thinking on this stuff. Like, we have all this gender, you know, like, rename the bathrooms and all this stuff. And my initial reaction is like, what the fuck? Like, that seems silly. But that's, like, it's silly to me. I'm still, like, trying to think this through. But it's silly to me because I don't feel like it's needed within, like, you know, my circle of friends or whatever. But on the, the grand spectrum, I'm really tired of, like, it's kind of like a just, you know, somebody dies. No matter what you say, it's going to go through the filter of that sensitivity, right? I'm just sick of, like, the patriarchy, and I just like to, it's enjoyable reading that headliner. Because it's like, okay, people are really fucking sick, and whatever, we'll just do what we need to do to deal with this right now. Like, yeah, it's silly at the end of the day, because... You know, people are just people and we should be able to, you know, just understand each other without having to change the name of a manhole. Um, no, maintenance hole. M- maintenance hole. <laughs> as, as of June, as of July 17th, maintenance hole. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you know, you could take it to the next level. I think it's really similar in saying, well, why do we need to have gay marriage? You know, I personally know that Let's I don't give a marriage, fuck. call it marriage, right? Right. Um, but you know, we've seen, or I've seen the effect that it has on people directly when the government changes something, then, you know, it just, I think can help move along the general thinking. See, I'm the opposite. Yeah. As soon as the government starts trying to, and even this is a local government situation, even, as soon as the government tries to like tap in, mm-hmm. I'm already skeptical because if they're on board they're only benefiting from whatever the hell they're doing. Yeah. There's never a time but when least... there's any government, local, right. even the smallest congressperson. Yeah. They're all doing it for their own benefit. Yeah. I agree with that. So then it's like, what the hell? For sure. I just started thinking. They're like yeah. catering like, to some lobbyist. Exactly. She's back. Yes. Sure. I'm back. Sure, yes, sure. I am. Sorry. <laughs> I used the artist restroom. <laughs> Where Erica Badu puts yeah. her booty. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Whenever I have many a rock star. Well, I mean that is a good point. Like we had that event here. It was like the Democratic presidential campaigns came and spoke. That was right before I was hired. No, it was just the other day. Oh, well, I wasn't here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, was here like, when Obama was here. That's what I was yeah, thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. This was like the presidential candidates for this oh, upcoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they were all about, like, we got to put up the gender-neutral signs. We got to have a prayer room. We need to have a nursery. and it they just, want the votes. Yeah, and it was like, well, this just seems ridiculous because you're so obviously just putting on a show because mm-hmm. that's what people want right now. Well, I mean, 
Yeah. So definitely because they're running for office. Yeah. And that's why all politicians are say it. How do you <laughs> full of shit? Corrupt full of shit. <laughs> Because you have to. You have to pander to your audience. Or you don't get voted in. Right. Which is sick, but sad, and amazing. I did feel yeah. like there was only one, one and a half candidates up there that were not one speaking. One and a half? That were speaking as a real person was, and not like who just. Who was the half? Um, I thought Elizabeth Warren was pretty, she seemed yeah. like a real person. That was the half? Well, because I'm not saying, like, I'm not giving her, like, a full point. Oh, okay. So who's, who's, who's <laughs> Only half of her. Who was the Only one? Only half of Bernie. her. And who was the one? Oh, Bernie, Bernie was full... there? Yeah. Huh? Why the hell? Bernie, I didn't get invited Bernie to this. Bernie Sanders. I don't know. Yeah. I Maybe hate politics, but also, I think he's like, our best, best I mean, chance. Our bar wasn't open, correct? Yeah, yeah he was the only one. I was like, he's not playing the game. He's just being real. We didn't have any bar situations, did we? We didn't have a bar situation, but we had a... Yeah. Well, some that's why I wouldn't activists know. jumped on the... Stage situation. Oh, great. How did he slide in? We're in San Francisco, you know. That's like the question, yeah. Mm. <laughs> if you do. <Google>. Anyway. <laughs> oh, much better. So much better now. I'm glad. I was getting a little anxious there. All right, so we got one more episode? Question. <laughs> Not question. One more article we're going to we're going to okay. bounce off each other. Here's a here's the topic. This is an AP article. Louisiana judge orders man's mouth taped for interruptions. I'm going to read okay, a little bit. I don't know anything about this. <laughs> Do oh, you? I told I you. Never... <laughs> Did you know anything about the piglet with the watermelon situation? No. There you go. Uh, what? Didn't court really. logs show a Louisiana District Court judge ordered a man's mouth taped shut for repeatedly interrupting proceedings. <laughs> the uh, the acad what is that? The what? Acadiana. Acadini. Acadiana oh. advocate okay. reports Michael C. Duhan was sentenced July 18th for theft and money laundering. Court minutes show Duhan objected when Judge Mar Marilyn Castle asked him to stop submitting motions on his own behalf instead of through his attorney. After reported, repeatedly requesting for Duhan to be quiet, Castle ordered the bailiff to tape Duhan's mouth <laughs> shut. The tape was removed after an objection from Duhan's public defense attorney, Aaron Adams, who requested the judge remove his client from the courtroom instead. Castle sentenced Duhon to 11 years in prison and Whoa. recommended he be transferred to a facility with mental health treatment options. Mm. Another public defender in the courtroom faces well, but, contempt I mean, charges for recording the incident. Hold so, on. But he didn't get 11 years for 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 doing the... Is that him? For I got the being dude. In, Hold for on. being an interruptive or, you know... Well, he, here, check it out. So... Also, this is Louisiana. They have the worst laws in the mm. fucking world. Yeah. So, mm. well, not the world, but this country. Okay. Uh, Attorney General's Office, Lafayette man arrested for fraudulently diverting nearly 400000 worth of funds. Not even a lot of money. Just saying. Attorney General Jeff Landry's Louisiana Bureau of Investigations arrested Michael Duhon, 51, of Lafayette on charges of felony theft, excess of 25000 money laundering, and exploitation of person with infirmities. As, Infirm as Attorney General, I am committed to ensuring the safety of our citizens, said Attorney Jeff General Landry. This arrest should serve as a warning that my office will not tolerate those who attempt to defraud our state's people. Duhon was booked into Lafayette Parish Sheriff's Office Correctional Facility. He allegedly presented himself to his victim as a financial professional and over the course of several months, misappropriated nearly 400000 through the use of elaborate and convoluted fraudulent schemes. He allegedly facilitated the formation of various shell corporations and open bank accounts for the businesses at various financial institutions, diverting nearly $400,000. He's probably getting somebody's retirement money. But at the same time, 11 years? For, for Usually people like this don't get anything. Really? For, yeah. For... Like all the people that defraud all the old people that they scam I know and tell them that I know people I know people in this <laughs> state who have done way worse than this so he and they're still working. The judge. Yes. Mm. <laughs> he seriously irritated the and judge because years. the judges was the one who decides how much time you get. Mm -hmm. yep. 
they're in the end. They're the ones, you know, the, the jury passes the, the, yeah, they you know, the guilty or not guilty, but the judge is the one who decides how much time you get. Yeah. If mm. he would, if he would have shut up, he probably would have got two years, three years. Yeah. He, he irritated the judge. Seriously. 11. <laughs> 11 years, Under dude. The jail. That's it for you. <laughs> In a mental ward. <laughs> yeah, this is the, yeah. This oh, man, don't. put him in an institution. Yeah. I don't even know what to say about that. What? You advocated for the pigs, <laughs> but you can't advocate for a man getting his mouth taped in just, court? Dude, wait, it's wait. I have to crazy. tell you that when you started it's talking weird. about that, Tola reminded me. I'm not going to tell you where I was working. You have to now. But there was a drunk person. <laughs> That, it was here. It was here. That, <laughs> that, that, it was one of these venues. But they had to call the police on him. Because a patron? Just, a patron. Okay. So a patron just <laughs> who just so happened to be in a local band. Oh. So he was so drunk and he Green was day. so horrible. He was being so just like he would not stop whatever he was saying and cussing out the security person that had to hold him Uh-oh. until the police Damn. got there Spaghetti and I came news. down and he had Uh-oh. silver tape across his what? mouth. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> he was like sitting in a chair waiting for the cops oh. with his mouth tape. Duct I tape mean, that sounds that warranted. Duct tape. Duct tape. That yeah, sounds warranted. Yes, he was duct tape. He, they, the, he had so pissed off. This is it. You know, you really, yeah. people just don't know when to shut up. Yeah. I swear to God. That's, I've seen and that. And he just, yeah. th- so frustrated. I mean, probably this, you know, and it was the whole thing was he was drunk. He was annihilated. Mm, yeah. So annihilated, yeah. we had to call the police, yeah. you know? Yeah. And even so, he would not shut up. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. This I've situation had, had... doesn't sound warranted, but that one does. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. well, I mean, there's the one where the people got in a brawl here, and the cops came, and the woman that st- started the whole thing punched the cops out oh, out front. I think I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I was like, "There's gonna be a fight over here. Somebody needs. It. There's gonna be a fight. There's gonna be a fight." <laughs> Somebody, please. There, the people told me there's going to be there's a fight. Gonna... And happening. I was like telling like Keith and the security people, I'm like, there's going to be a fight. And no one would listen to you? Well, they would not. They didn't. And then there, and then the next thing I know, these two women are rolling out the door like cat fighting. <laughs> like two cats like rolling underwear, showing skirts up oh. to their necks, you know. And it's just like, it's like. Skirt to the neck. Well, I mean, you know, you could say would just like anymore. it was. I have never seen women fight like that. Mm. They were just like it was like a ball of fury rolling down the out of the door. I was like, what? I was like, hey. I was like, hey, it's happening. <laughs> they warned us. Okay, the fight. <laughs> it's the fight. <laughs> the one security guard that was there got punched out and knocked oh, out. Oh. By the there was a, one of the people that the guy that told me there was going to be a fight was laying there on the ground, knocked out. I was oh like, my Damn. goodness, that's the cops well, came in with riot. Well, well thankfully gear. you you avoided all that. Yeah, I was on the main stairs going, uh, <laughs> fight over here. The fight's the happening coming. now. <laughs> yeah, I just did. Yeah, I still don't understand why I don't get a, a radio for. Yeah, like, you I'm, should have one. I am, yeah. I am always like, fuck, where is security? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why don't I have a radio? Yeah. I, I think mean, you should have one. It's, a, it's, 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 it's true. Everybody Because our radio's like, Even oh my people... God, somebody just fell out. <laughs> Shit, well. <laughs> where you at? Stage bar. Oh, well, fan them. Get, throw water on them. <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. I'm like, oh, he's totally like, I'm like. You know, everybody can't be everywhere all the time. And it's like, yeah. I think the more people that have radios, radios is, yeah. Yeah. As long as they follow good radio etiquette. Yeah, radio. Can, yeah. Some people, I don't think they could do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Most of it's most hard. of my people can't even operate I think radio. I think, like, yeah, I think like a... A bartender, like bartenders should yeah. definitely have them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? oh, should just get... Because I'm always... Popping up at, at the bars. Mm-hmm. Or they're talking to me on the bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, can we get a manager up here? Somebody's yeah. about to die. 
<laughs> what? That's not the manager's job. Hold on. I'm going to get These two scared. guys will fight. I'm going to go get rock made real quick. Oh, man. And yeah, and if you have a biscuit for the radio piece, that, like, I, it took me a while to catch on to, but if you just, like, start bringing that to your mouth, that can break up all kinds of shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what just I was... Just act like you're talking about stuff. Yeah. Like, like, talk to manager. Like, oh, hey. like, can I help you? Like, <laughs> well, uh... I had nothing. I, yeah, no. You know what? Forget it. <laughs> yeah. No, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I had some scary guys at the bar upstairs, and I don't know why I got called into it, but I did. And I was, like, approaching them. I was, like, Ugh. they were, like, really pissed off because they didn't get the right amount of pour for their shots or something. And I was, like, how do I handle this? And then it's not my job. And I, <laughs> I was so naive at the time. I was, like, okay, don't worry. We'll, I'll take care of it. And I start bringing the biscuit to my... And they're all, like, whoa, no, everything's fine. It's cool. Thank you so much. I was, like, what? <laughs> You're probably, like... Security, come up here right now. <laughs> I've, I've told you that I've broken up fights, and they're like, who is this little woman? And, okay, we're good. <laughs> Bye. I said, are you here to see a show or fight? Oh, Go yeah. To your seats People are like, now. hold on, if you seem important, then all yeah. of a sudden my problem's not big anymore. Yeah. yeah. Or or yeah. just like, I'm being an asshole if you're like, why are, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what is, what? What exactly are you doing? Are you having a good time right now? <laughs> is this a good time to you? What is a good time? Getting into it with an usher? <laughs> you know, is this a good time are to you? you? Why fun? don't you just go to your seat? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and they're like, their buddies are like, we're taking him. He's going now. <laughs> People get belligerent. Like, Damn right, yeah. don't come back either. Yeah, especially when it's like a little bitty girl that starts... Ugh. mommy and them or something like mm. giving them that look like you know <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> like their mom you know <laughs> like a yeah. little thing <laughs> yeah or, or sometimes their parents will just egg them on <laughs> I was, that happened to me once on a bus yeah. Ooh. all right well we're all of beverages so oh what no tina still has mm. hers oh well he seriously I'm looked sure jealous sure. right there. I know. <laughs> he was looking seriously. I'm sure you can have Here. a sip if you ask her. But I'm going to take one along the way. <laughs> Look, he lives before it gets to you. <laughs> well, also, we have nothing else to talk about. There you so. go. Alrighty. Anything? This will be Cheers. the end right here. We're done. Thank you. I mean, <sighs> no, this was back in the like. That's not bad. Did we early... say anything about your shoe? Or have you addressed that on other episodes? Uh, it'll address itself. It's okay. Just right. It's in a big green shoe. It's okay. like yeah, it. it's kind of there. I just wanted to <laughs> I'm say. Like, it's, I'm looking and I can see. That nice that's shoe. the one thing I can see and know what it is. I just hope that it's still <laughs> oh, recording. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> it's still recording. Okay, yeah, we're still recording. <laughs> All right, well, yeah. this is the end. This is episode 33. Thank you to Beatrice. Thank, Thank you. Thank you to Tina. Thank you. Thank you, Dexter, for having me. Live you, from the Warfield. Um, if you want to, if you're listening still <laughs> and you want to follow, the podcast comes on SoundCloud, Apple, live, mm -hmm. probably the day after because, um, what time is it? I, uh oh. Remind me later. Thank you. <laughs> we oh, eight thirty. I still, what that I still might be able. To. What's t-shirt? Oh, right. oh yeah, yeah. The t-shirt, the Nirvana t-shirt that we can't quite quite explain all the way. Yeah, <laughs> it had it baby had a kissing, saying on it. American God fearing, <laughs> uh, whatever baby the hell, motherfucker, <laughs> motherfucker, something. Yeah. Something. <laughs> if you know what this shirt is, motherfucker. <laughs> if you know what shirt this is, send it to us. Um. But if you want to follow the podcast, it's on Instagram, Industry Special, Twitter, Industry Special, Snapchat, Industry Special. <laughs> if you want to be formal and email anything, like, you know, Fernet following me, want to give me some money because I've been promoting y'all for so long. Fernet. Fernet Branca. <laughs> uh, Industry Special Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, Patreon.com slash Industry Special if you would like to donate any money dollar is literally the bottom tier give me a dollar i'll give you a hug <laughs> seriously i fly to hawaii to give you a hug oh, shit. you gotta pay for it but <laughs> a dollar on the industry special that's it um that's it it's eight thirty-three right now so not oh, bad shit. since we started that 
what? Seven. 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 I think, yeah. yeah. Well, now I know what I'm promoting. There we go. Finally. I mean, that's your fault for not <laughs> Googling. <laughs> The elusive I was Google busy, again. and then I quit my job, and now I'm not busy there you anymore. Go. So fuck that job. Yeah. <laughs> All Oops. right. Thank you guys, and thank everybody listening. This is it. Bye thank bye. you. And there we go. We had that one fun. hour twenty minutes, but I think about five of that is just us getting the sound down. Oh, okay. Cool. Damn. Like having these on, it's so much louder. Oh, uh, okay. So like yeah. I hear. It. Every little thing. You oh want. shit! I burped at one point. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Fudge packing, crack smoking, Satan worship with mother. Oh, let me see. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, hold on. That's fucking awesome. And then there was still, a more tame version that I'm, was. I'm still recording on here, so. Okay. Let's let's get the phone. Okay. So, that's fucking cool. This is behind the scenes shit right here. This is only you get if you go to patreon.com slash industry special. <laughs> I gotta get one of those shirts. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then there was there was a there was a more uh, there was a more there was a more was a like one? there was a baby kissing, you know, yes. something but it ended one. with motherfucker. It was a more tame one. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't think uh, sorry about what? I quite finished mine because I saw some splash.